Did you know that there is a city in the jungle in this part of the world? Yes, a city in the jungle. You heard it right. Well, that is where World Eyes will take you now. Before we go into that, World Eyes will continue to have a trivia question at the end of this video as I had started previously, which will win you a nice t-shirt with my two YouTube channel's logo embedded on it. Here's the t-shirt, guys. So, let's both in. Word Eyes brings you any educational knowledge or information around the globe, current or many years ago, that has historical or significant value. It is your eyes to the world. When I say a city in the jungle, that is figuratively speaking. However, that city is literally thriving in an environment of green. The walkways, the long stretch of corridors, The buildings, the rooftops, and countless walls that have been adorned with creeping vines and plants. The city is none other than Singapore, that is small city-state in Southeast Asia which is better known as the Garden City. Singapore has a considerable number of modern skyscrapers that are ringed with plants and trees, roof gardens with beautiful verdant green walls. About 55% of Singapore's buildings have been green. With respect to Singapore's land, about 47% is green space making it one of the greeniest cities in the world today with over 300 kilometers of green corridors. And mind you, the streets are clean. The idea of making Singapore green was initiated by no less than Lee Kuan Yew in 1963, the country's first prime minister. Lee started planting over 55,000 new trees in what was known then as Parel Circus, a roundabout, and from there it became a yearly event of tree planting. Then the idea expanded to the walkways. The corridors. The buildings and places of residence. A program has been instituted that requires new buildings to use green walls and green available spaces, which are incorporated into walking networks. The combination of walking infrastructure with green infrastructure leads to comfortable walking environments and the spread of more green spaces. Thus, Singapore, with its greening program, has made large energy savings, making every inch of land or place more habitable, while at the same time partially mitigating the impact of global warming. The greening of Singapore is just one of the many achievements of Lee Kuan Yew for his country. He was, in fact, greatly responsible for where Singapore is now on the world stage. He turned the third world country to a first world nation. Singapore is one of the most prosperous nations today, with a gross national income of 540 billion US dollars in 2022 and an economy that is considered one of the strongest in the world today. It has large pool of foreign guest workers, roughly about 1.2 million, that include, among others, the migrant domestic workers, 
numbering about 246,000, which is a crucial part of the Lion State's economy. Singapore maintains this large pool of foreign gas workers to caution the economy from fluctuation in demand. The country provides one of the world's most business-friendly regulatory environments for local entrepreneurs, which has attracted about 526,000 millionaires and about 30 billionaires residing in this tiny little city-state that used to be a swamp and a jungle and has ultimately become the hub for wealth management. It is not far-fetched that Singapore could be the next Switzerland for ultra-high net worth individuals. Its GDP today, in terms of purchasing power parity, is the third highest in the world. It has an almost perfect credit rating with no foreign debt. Money borrowed is invested instead of spending, making the net national debt zero. It also has high government revenue. In fact, it is more expensive to live in Singapore than in the United States, ranking second among the most expensive countries in the world today. Right now, I'm here at the Open Grill Japanese restaurant at the Robertson Quay after almost a week long of exploring Singapore. By the way, if you haven't subscribed to my channel by this time, please do so now. And don't forget to share this video to others so they may see it. Thank you. With the Kuan Yu's firm and no-nonsense crusade on corruption during his time, the country is still boasts of having a low corruption rate, ranking third in the world among top Asian nations in 2022. All those who hold office must abide by strict standards of public and private conduct. No one was above the law. If once in a while some forms of corruption do still appear, it is still very much under control. Singapore continues to be a transparent public institution, no discretion, everything is open. Many countries saw Lee Kuan Yew and Singapore as role models. The Philippines was one of them. But in a country like mine, the Philippines, once leaders get elected, their instinct for self-preservation sucks them into the vortex of their own comforts, poisoned by greed and avarice to the detriment of the constituents they represent. And so, until now, the country's stability and progress keep sliding down the drain. As Lee Kuan Yew had said, you cannot be a good leader if you only think of yourself and not of your people. Singapore achieved all of this by instituting draconian laws with pangs of conscience. Dissent was restricted to a manageable level. Laws that were deemed autocratic were implemented and, and political opposition was dismantled. Some considered Lee a dictator, but many saw him a benevolent one. Thus, Singapore becomes a country with rigid and stringent laws to sustain the changes and improvement being carried out. To Lee Kuan Yew, undisciplined people are inimical to development. And this is why. This is the first riot in Singapore in four decades in national who was knocked down. Where in the world does one who chews bubble gum or gets to plus a public toilet accidentally bumps a woman in the street or elbows her while inside the train, brings a durian fruit on public transportation, appears naked in their own room with an open window or accidentally enters a restricted area during rush hours, pays a fine or jail time or both. Rules and laws must be followed and obeyed in Singapore. There are no ifs or buts. You violate the law, 
you pay for it. Amazingly, this is what makes the city-state of Singapore progressive, prosperous, and stable. People have learned how to act and follow the rules. In fact, everything in the Lion State seems to be in order. Probably even the air moves in the right direction. Vehicles run smoothly according to the prescribed traffic system. One can hardly see traffic policemen or even law enforcers in the streets. Even the crime rate is low, making it among the safest in the world. In fact, even in zoos, the animals know when to come out if there are visitors or when to go back to their cages. Birds sing what they are told to and fly to places they are directed to. Elephants stand, dance, and sit when their mahouts raise their hands. Crocodiles open their mouth to allow their keepers to clean their teeth. And even the river that flows in and out of the animal park goes where the zookeeper wants it to go. With almost everything in order and 47% of Singapore's land covered in green, one can easily imagine that the environment is almost free from pollution. As I said earlier, trees, plants, and last vegetation are everywhere. Along the road, between or in front of buildings, inside big establishments where people congregate, even columns of flyovers and overpasses and bridges with clinging vines all over. In short, when one enters Singapore, it's like walking into a well-preserved forested jungle where everything is well kept down to the last pebble or piece of grass. Although Singapore can be dubbed as the city of fines or the garden city, I would rather call it a city in the jungle. What do you think? Here's the trivia question for this blog. Who was the first Prime Minister of Singapore and was greatly responsible for turning the third world country into a first world nation? Write your answer in the comment section below together with the size of the t-shirt of your preference, medium and large only, together with your name and address. The first two subscribers with the correct answer win. You'll get your t-shirt by mail wherever you are in this world. Good luck! Again, that's for now guys. Tune in for World Eyes next news video. Just a small favor, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so. Thanks. And that's for now for World Eyes. Stay tuned on my next blog. And don't forget to subscribe, please. Thank you.